Hey everybody, so um, today uh, we're going to learn about how to use Excel to create a graph, alright? Um, and we're going to put an equation on that graph too, alright? So uh, the directions you could see are from the graphing data on Excel document. I'm doing uh, document A, but you might have letter B depending on the first letter of your last name. So, um, okay, we're just going to go through the directions in that document um, and create a graph, all right? And then describe that graph at the end, all right? Uh, so, first thing is, uh, we're just going to do number one together, and then you're going to have to do the rest, okay? So, uh, for number one, the first step is going to be step A here, uh, transfer the data to Excel and title each column, all right? So I'm going to scroll down and transfer this data to Excel. A car enters an on-ramp and proceeds onto the highway. The distance was measured from its initial position on the ramp over time. And you have time and distance as the two pieces of data we're going to transfer. The time is in minutes, so write it like that with a parentheses in minutes. And the distance is in kilometers. So write a parenthesis for kilometer. I'm going to enlarge that cell a little bit and then we could transfer the numbers. So for time, starts with zero, then one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to seven minutes. And the distance, zero, eight, twenty-two, forty-two, sixty-eight, one hundred, one thirty-eight, 182. Remember, if I go too fast for you, just pause the video and then you can restart it. So we transferred the data. That's letter A. And we titled each column. Okay. Now, letter B, produce a scatter plot graph. Okay. So um, <clears throat> the first point there is highlight the numbers only in each column. That means the letters like time and distance we can't highlight only the numbers. So we're going to highlight only the numbers. Those are the numbers right there. And then the, click the insert tab up top. And then choose scatter with only the dots. So this is, you can see it says XY scatter when I hover over those dots there. And the one with only the dots is the one we want to choose. Beautiful. Nice you can see those dots are arranged in a curve upwards there. So we did letter B. Now, it, this graph doesn't say what's on the X and Y axis though. All right, we have to uh, put that in there. All right, so letter C, we're going to label the axes and title the graph. So it says click on the new chart and click on add chart element, that direction right there. So Sorry. Click on the chart and then hit Add Chart Element in the top left. Add a uh, axis title and a chart title. All right. So we're going to start with chart title. Above the chart is checked, and we're going to write whatever uh, we're going to write whatever's in the right column, distance, versus whatever's in the left column, time. All right. And that'll be good. All right. Now the axis titles, let's start with horizontal. You can see when I clicked horizontal, it that's the x-axis, so a little text box appears there. We could delete text in there. And we could input, uh, well, what's on the x-axis? Well, the x-axis is always from the left column here. So the left column is time, so don't forget the parenthesis with the unit, minutes. And there we go. You can just click in the white space on the graph there and you're back to now where you could go back to that menu and click vertical axis. Delete the text in that text box and the right column is what goes on the y-axis so that is distance and the unit is kilometers. Don't forget the unit in parentheses. Now I'll click on the white space in the graph and we have our chart title and axis titles added and that's done. So letter C is done in the directions. Now letter D. Add a trend line. 
and display an equation relating the two variables. Replace x and y with the actual variables you measured. Okay. So we're going to add a trend line. How do we do that? First it says right click on a point from the graph. So we're going to control click or right click on one of those points and this menu comes up. Then we click add trend line. Then we choose uh, the best trend line that matches the way those dots are curved. Okay, So that seems to go upwards with the dots but it doesn't curve because that's a linear choice right there. And we could try exponential. It's not letting us click that, so we can't choose that one. Logarithmic, eh, that says, no, please don't choose that. That didn't work. <laughs> so if that happens, just right-click again on the dot and hit Add Trend Line. If it kicks you out. And I think it polynomial is going to be the one. Yep, yeah, that seems to curve upwards. Order 2 means it, it's uh, there's something that's squared in the equation that produces that line. So you can leave it like that as long as the line looks good. And you just choose out of these options the one that best fits the way the dots are curved. Okay? Um, okay, so choose the best trend line on the right. We did that. Now the next point, it says on the bottom right, check the box labeled set intercept. Actually, don't check that. Just click the one that says that display equation on the chart. So there's your equation. It's so hard to see the numbers in there. So I'd like you to go to the Home tab when you get that equation up. <clears throat> and actually, you see the font in there is not number 9. I want you to highlight in that text box and change it to like 14. So you can, there we go. I could see those better. Maybe I'm just old, maybe my eyes are old. I hope not, but uh, we want to be able to see those numbers. Now we can. Okay, so this number, that's 1 times 10 to the negative 13. I'm going to get rid of that because uh, if it's a negative E with a negative exponent, you could get rid of it. And that's our equation of the line, okay? You see the squared in there? Makes it kind of curve upwards. Um, okay, so it says in the, the last point in letter D is in the equation displayed on your chart, replace the X and the Y with the actual val variables you measured. For example, D for distance and T for time. So you won't always replace with D and T, but what I, what I want you to do is uh, there's a y in this equation, but look what's on the y-axis over here. It's distance. So instead of writing a y, I'm just going to replace that with the first letter in distance, which is d. Okay? And the x is the, that means x-axis. So, but what's on the x-axis? Well, we already labeled it time. All right? So instead of writing x, I'm going to replace that with a letter t because that's the first letter in time. And there's an x over here, too. So I'm going to replace that with a t as well. So this is our equation of the line. t equals 3t squared plus 5t. All right? So don't forget to do that when after you put the equation up. Maybe you'll have something like uh, number 2. When you get there, you'll have height. You could write h for height on the x-axis. And speed, you could write with an s. Or with like light bulbs, you can write L. And current, you can write uh, C. You know, just don't leave it as X and Y, okay? <clears throat> okay, so now you're, you're done with your graph, okay? But there are still E, F, and G to do, okay? So how do we finish it off? Uh, don't copy and paste the graph. Actually take a screenshot of it here. There we go. Hit done. Now it'll be in your desktop, okay? Uh, and it says screenshot this into the Word document underneath each question. Okay, so underneath number one right here is where I'd like to put the screenshot of that graph. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to have this screenshot. I'm just going to highlight 
that area right there, take copy, and then paste. Okay, and make it a little smaller. So I did letter E, I screenshotted it in there. The last thing you need to do, letter G just says how to submit this whole document, so don't worry about that. The last thing you need to do for number one is letter F. It says, in this Word document, describe the trend on the graph you have made in a complete sentence. Okay, so if we look back at our types of graph notes, we have to decide, remember we have linear, exponential, inverse, um, we have those types of graphs, or no relation. You know, what does this look like? Well, if I look at my types of graph notes, this looks like an exponential graph, okay? And the way to describe an exponential graph is as x increases, then y increases at an accelerated rate. So that's how we describe exponential graphs. But, and that's just literally from your types of graph notes, okay? If you have that sentence in there, you could just copy it here. But we want to replace x with what? Time. And y with what? What's on the y-axis? Distance. So just copy the sentence from your notes and replace x with one letter uh, word that's on the x-axis and replace the y with the word that's on the y-axis. And you've described your graph. And <laughs> that's it, you know? It's a pretty uh, cookie cutter for you there. Um, just to copy that sentence from your types of graph notes and replace the x with one word and the y with another word.